some positive news in the world of golf. It'll be played in South Florida, and it's something that will allow us to see some of the best in the world back on the golf course. The TaylorMade Driving Relief event has been announced. It'll be at one of the great golf clubs in America, Seminole, just uh, north of West Palm Beach in Florida there. It'll include Ricky Fowler and Matthew Wolf, a couple of Oklahoma State Cowboys as teammates, but they'll be going against Rory and Dustin Johnson, and you see that Rory and DJ will be playing the two former world number ones for the American Nurses Foundation. Ricky and Matt will be playing for the CDC Foundation. $3 million charity skins. Thanks to United Health Group for being a part of that with a million dollars for the birdies and the eagle pool from Farmer Insurance. Farmers Insurance, a lot of folks pitching in to help out with COVID-19 relief. And those two former world number ones and major champions who are teammates Rory McIlroy and Dustin Johnson join us now. Wait a minute. We, we got one American, one European here. You guys are usually on opposite sides of the fence when it comes to playing golf, but you'll be teammates with this. Rory, I'll start with you, then Dustin. What was your reaction as you guys were approached about being a part of this? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thanks for having us on. Um, I mean, personally, I jumped at the chance to do this. I think with everything that's happened over the past few months to to be able to get together with some of the best golfers in the world and raise awareness, raise money for uh, what has been the, you know, a, a, a tragic uh, time, you know, to, to be able to raise money for the, the frontline uh, workers, doctors, nurses, um, people who are vi fighting this virus every single day. You know, I'm, I'm very honored that I can be a small part of it and would like to thank TaylorMade and United Health Group for, for helping putting it on. It's, um, it's going to be fun to be a part of and, you know, selfishly, I'm, I'm excited to get back on the golf course again. Yeah. And for me, it's been, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great, mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, obviously Taylor made called and I was, I was happy to do this. I think it's, you know, anytime you can do, you know, something as small as going to play around the golf to, to raise some money for people who really need it, you know, for, for COVID-19 relief, it's, uh, you know, it's really easy for us to do something like this. DJ, I'll start with you then. Rory, what's it going to be like to be teammates with each other? Oh, well, I'm happy Rory's my teammate for sure. We, we've played a lot of golf together. <laughs> we even we even kind of talked about maybe even playing uh, the, the New Orleans tournament. So it's, you know, wow. I've played enough with him. I think we would uh, – I think we'll be a good team. We're going to have a tough match, though, against Fowler and Wolf. <laughs> Wolf. They're two really good players. Yeah, uh, yeah, same thing. So it was funny. DJ uh, rang me up the week after the Players' Championship, and he was out on his boat, and he said, hey, if if uh, if the, the New Orleans uh, tournament happens, would you want to be partners? And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not sure if it, if it is going to happen, but if it does, yeah, that would be fun. So... You know, we didn't get a chance to do it there, but, you know, we're getting the chance to do it at Seminole in a couple of weeks' time, and, you know, that that's going to be fun. And as DJ said, against Ricky and Matt, who uh, I know Ricky's played Seminole a bunch and knows a bunch of the members there, and, um, you know, it'll be a tough game. I think one of the cool things about this as well, you know, obviously the char charitable aspect is huge, but this is the first time that, that Seminole Golf Club is ever going to be on TV, so I think people are going to be in for a treat as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys, DJ, I'll let you start. For the folks who don't know anything about Seminole, it's traditionally one of the top 15 courses in the world. What a great opportunity for American golf fans to see one of the true Donald Ross original design gems in the golf world. Yeah, it is. You know, Seminole is a special place. And, you know, fortunate for us, we live right down the street from it. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten to play it quite a few times. And it's a course you always enjoy playing. It's, you know, it's got a tons of history and, you know, it's, you know, when you first get there and you look at it, you think, okay, you know, I'm going to go, you know, I should tear this place up. But then when you, when you get done playing, you add your <laughs> score up and it's never very good, especially because the greens are always so fast. It's a little windy, but um, yeah, I don't know. I always struggle there. Yeah, all the holes go in almost different angles and directions, the way the greens sit. It's an amazingly laid-out piece of property framed by the sand dunes along the Atlantic Ocean, for those not familiar, just north of West Palm Beach. It'll be a spectacular venue for this kind of match. And this will really be the first golf 
that we see. And we know that golf is on the calendar to come back in mid-June at Colonial and get started there with four events without fans. Rory, I'll let you start, then DJ follow. What are your thoughts as you look ahead to June and try to plan out what's going to be a very busy stretch if we get back on the golf course? Yeah, for sure, Mike. Um, look, I'm I'm very hopeful that that the schedule that the tour put out is is going to happen. Um, you know, everyone that's working on it is is very confident that we're going to be able to get back out on the golf course. Obviously, with with a lot of precautions, um, taking all the necessary measures to make sure that that we keep everyone safe and healthy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think just you know, the whole world is starved of of sport on TV. And, and obviously we're, we're going to come back these first four events as you see, and um, you know, there won't be any spectators, but I think just for people to have a little bit of escapism and, and watch something on TV that, that is in the news and, and isn't, you know, about the coronavirus, I think will be, will be nice for some people. So as I said, to be able to be a part of that and maybe bring something different to, um, to TVs across mm -hmm. the, across the country is a good thing. Yeah, for me, I'm. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to to playing. Hopefully, you know, if everything goes well, and you know, we continue to get on the other side of this virus, that, um, you know, we can start in second week of June. You know, like Rory said, I think you know people need. Well, they want something to watch for one. Um, you know, the no sport on TV. It's it's been it's been strange. It's a strange time. But I'm really looking forward to, to mm -hmm. getting back out and competing and playing some golf again. Uh, DJ, I'll let you start on this one. How much golf have you guys been playing during these uh, really seven weeks since we all scrammed from the players on Friday morning? Uh, well, for me, I've hit balls twice since the players for about an hour. Um, you know, they closed <laughs> down the courses here in Palm Beach, but... Um, they did reopen mm -hmm, last right. week, and so I'm, I'm actually going to go out this afternoon and start practicing again. <laughs> DJ, as your partner, that's good to hear. Good to hear you're going to come back and, uh, and and hit some. I uh, I uh, I hit some balls last week. Um, I think it was on Thursday, and then I actually played golf um, mm -hmm. Saturday and yesterday. So I've, I've I played 36 holes over the weekend, which was really good to get back out there. As DJ said, uh, the courses in Palm Beach County uh, opened up again, so at least we can get out and play and practice a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's sort of now all systems go to you know to get ready for the 17th of May and, ma and make sure that the DJ and I come out victorious. Hey, Roars, I'll start with you here. For those of us who go through stretches where we don't play golf because of the winter or where we live or our jobs, it's always rust at first to get back on the golf course. What's it like for two of the greatest golfers in the world to go a month, six weeks without hitting a golf ball and then get back and start over? Do you pick up really close to where you left off? You know, Mike, you don't, you don't think you're going to pick up close to where you left off but it's it's obviously still in there you know it, it's what we do and we do it a lot and we do it for a long time and we do it for long stretches uh i honestly i was pleasantly surprised with how i hit the golf ball over the weekend so um <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty encouraged uh but there is like there is sometimes you you, you pick it up and it, it takes you a couple of days to find the middle of the club face um thankfully this wasn't one of those times so you know, hopefully DJ can take some comfort in that and know that his partner's in pretty good form. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, for me it's it's kind of the same. It, it it differs, but you know, I I hit balls a couple weeks ago and for the first time in a in a long time, and I was actually I was very surprised at how well I hit it. Uh, you know, it's more the for me it's more the little things around the greens like you know chipping and putting is what takes just a little bit longer to get sure. your touch back but full swing wise um you know generally sometimes a break actually helps me because you know i forget all the bad thoughts that i had before i, I <laughs> stopped playing well it's the tailor-made driving relief it'll happen in a couple of weeks we'll have it for you on nbc and golf channel pga tour productions a part of it all those uh, platforms where we deliver golf to you will be uh, 
seeing some of the best in the world for the very first time. Separate carts, so it is all uh, properly socially distanced out on the golf course. And we are really looking forward to that. DJ, as we wrap up, I don't know how good your voice is. Do you want to sing happy birthday to Rory or should I? <laughs> you should do that. <laughs> What 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 we both what we both say? What are you, old man? Thirty one, thirty one today, Rory. Thirty thirty one today, Mike. Yeah, I know. It's uh, they say the thirties are your best years, so we'll see. But um, I don't feel like it. It's amazing. I was saying to someone earlier, this is my fourteenth full year on tour. It's amazing. It, the time just goes so quick. Crazy. But uh, thank you for the birthday wishes. Yeah, happy birthday. Well, it's a good thing you're wearing that hat. Yeah, it's a good thing you're wearing that hat, because if you took off that hat, you'd look like that guy we saw 13 years ago on tour with that big mop of hair. I certainly would. You're, you're just jealous, Mike. That's what it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you, Rory. I think our interview time is done with you guys. I'm all for Ricky Fowler now and Matthew Wolf. I'm rooting for those guys. You're right. I am jealous of, of you guys both. Hey, thanks for the time. Thanks for being such uh, great sports and great supporters of the sport and all of its endeavors here in COVID-19. And we'll talk to you guys as we get closer to this event in a couple of weekends. Okay. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you.